It's always a pleasure to have the opportunity to introduce an admired and respected friend, especially when that friend is an educator of particular renown. Lynn Zielinski is Vice President of Public Affairs for the NSS. She is also our Director of Education. And as she herself would tell you, she wears many hats in this organization. She is a woman of seemingly unlimited energy and determination. As a passionate believer in the importance of education, she is the only person to have twice won the National Space Educator Award from the National Space Club. She is a presidential award winner, and she has also received the Alan Shepard Award for Technology and Science. Here are the really cool parts. Her students flew experiments on six space shuttle flights and nine suborbital rockets. And Beth Moses, the first female commercial astronaut who flew with Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2, is a former student of Lynn's. So see what happens when you have good teachers? And most importantly to me, she has an asteroid named after her. She is 22597. So this is asteroid 132904, inviting asteroid 22597 to please report to the stage. Please welcome Lynn Zielinski. Aloha. And mahalo. I think you're seeing a theme here, right? Okay. The theme has to do with our grand prize winner tonight for the Space Settlement Contest, the NSS Space Settlement Contest. And we're here today to recognize the grand prize winning team, which I have the unique privilege of sharing with all of you. Um, this team is quite an amazing team, and I'll get to that in a minute. But I would want to share with you some other things about the competition. This is an annual competition that has been going on for 26 years, and it has been led by Al Globus. Al, say hi. He'll be up here on stage in just a minute to join me in, in um, heralding these, these lovely students. And I have had the privilege to work with these students now for several months, and they are a joy and mainstay of the next generation of educators and engineers and musicians and all of the people that we're going to need in these space settlements that we're going to be producing and they're going to help us develop. So I think this is just an amazing time for all of these young students. The competition is run annually and it has several components to it. There are different age levels um, from 11 to 18 years of age. Anybody can enter from around the world. And the groups are individual, uh, small groups from two to six, and large groups from seven and more. And this team happens to be from the seven and more group. There are 11 members on this team, which are really, it's really quite amazing to get that many kids to work together. I don't know how you do it. I, I really don't. Well, actually, I do, but it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, So each year, the students amaze us with their innovation, their dedication, their determination, and their imagination. And this is really great because we need that. You know, we're kind of a little on the older side here, I might say, some of us. Um, <clears throat> and. We need this inspiration in our lives. And so represented here at the ISDC, we have about 450 to 500 students represented. I don't know if you've seen them all. But um, you may have seen their posters uh, in the afternoons from 1 to 3 in the, one of the ballrooms down on the other side of the building. Um, if you haven't had a chance to do that, these students are actually um, some of the 
200, I'm sorry, 2,691 entries that entered this year, which came from a total of about 12,899 individual students. That's a record. <laughs> Al, you're doing a great job. <laughs> um, there are more than 23 countries represented, and here at the conference, we have about 15 countries represented. So um, you may have seen uh, a lot of one culture or another, but there are a lot of other cultures in between that are here as well. Are there, if there are any students in this room, I'd like to recognize you. Could you please stand? Any students from the Space Settlement Competition? We've got some of there. Oops. These students work for a very long time, and if you've seen any of these projects, they're about this thick. They're, they're huge. Some of them are this thick. They're, they're, they're amazing projects. And I'd like to, to, to give you a statistic here. There are, last I looked, 3,944 exoplanets in our galaxy. Each one of those exoplanets some of them, well, I shouldn't say each, I should say some of them actually have the Goldilocks opportunity to hold life. And those are the planets that we kind of want to um, populate and settle. And so that gives us a, a piece of the vision of, of NSS living and working in space and spreading our seed throughout the galaxy so that humanity can survive. And so the representation of that is what happens in this award crystal that we are going to be giving, the sculpture, crystal sculpture that we're going to be giving to the school for, for this team's excellent, excellent work. And so um, at this time, I'd like to just, before I bring Al up here to share in this crystal, I'd like to share a couple of things about this team. One of the reasons they won was because they did actual experiments as part of the publication of their entry for this competition. They did four experiments, and they're going to be sharing those four experiments with you. Also, one of the team members was also did some vocal and some music, and they wrote a song associated with their space settlement as well. And that's pretty interesting and unique um, thing that was done within this entry. And so these unique characteristics, these the imagination that they brought is, is really quite extraordinary. So look for these experiments and, and see if um, you don't think that these kids are pretty remarkable, because I do. So I'd like to bring Al Globus up here. Al is a director uh, on the board of directors for the National Space Society. He is the 26 years ago, he founded the Space Settlement Contest, and he is also the director of the competition. Al, would you bring out the globe? Okay. This globe is, is really unique. It's a, it's a crystal sculpture by Bathsheba Grossman. She's an artist, and what she's done is she's taken the stars within five parsecs of our sun, Sol, and put them accurately within this crystal and labeled them. And this represents the NSS vision of bringing humanity to the nearest stars and all of these exoplanets that are out there for us to enjoy and or our future generations to enjoy. So this is that crystal, and we'd like to uh, present the crystal to the school um, and the teacher of the school right now. It's the Makoalani Christian Academy from Kailua, Kona, Hawaii.
The teacher is Mr. Frederick Herman. There also with this award comes a $5,000 scholarship, $5, scholarship that was split between the students from the Herman Rubin Memorial Scholarship. And basically what it is, um, is Herman Rubin was a professor of mathematics at the Purdue University. And he gave NSS a substant substantial amount of money and one of the things that we're doing with it is providing this scholarship to, to this team. So I'd like to introduce the team from the ASM Corporus. Come on up, my 11 member team. So I'll let the team introduce themselves. Good evening and aloha. Aloha. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> we are Team Aerospace Meridian from Akualani Christian Academy in Kailua Kona, Hawaii. My name is Maya Kalilau, and these are our team members. Rachel Lorenzo, Hannah Husek, Lena Wolcott, Jade Whiting, Austin Pham, our team leader, Josiah DeLuz, Logan Russell, Nolan Prius, Josiah Richards, and Christian Williams. <laughs> we present to you our space ring, the ASM Corpus. There are four phases of our project. First, we propose the Shackleton Crater Base to supply the engineers of the ASM Corpus with food, water, and fuel during the construction of the Corpus. Second, the asteroid Ryugu is mined for raw materials for building the ASM Corpus. Miners and engineers essentially transform the asteroid into the ASM Corpus. Third, the ASM Corpus is constructed as a space ring. Its design features radiation and high velocity particle shielding based upon the data we have collected from our own experiments. And fourth, once the ASM Corpus is constructed, it will be transferred into a circular orbit in the vicinity of Mars. This placement will allow the corpus to be an outpost for Mars exploration, a rest stop for asteroid belt miners, and a permanent space colony for the mass diversity of cultures and minds willing to unite together amongst the stars. The first phase of the ASM corpus is the, de is the development of the Shackleton crater base on the moon. The lunar base is very essential because it will provide food for the engineers constructing the ASM Corpus at Ryugu and fuel for orbital transfer. But how can we grow food on the moon? Well, we're planning to use lunar regolith as our growing medium. However, lunar regolith can cause severe complications. These razor-sharp microscopic particles can come in contact with the skin, eyes, or be inhaled into the lungs, causing severe cuts and inflammation. Regolith is so sharp that it can cut through Kevlar and spacesuits. However, based on the research that we've conducted, it is determined that lunar regolith can be converted into arable soil. To conduct our experiment, we use samples of regolith simulant from Hawaiian soil. This chart compares the mineral composition of lunar highland and lunar mare regolith with Hawaiian regolith simulant from two island locations. 
Lunar regolith and Hawaiian regolith simulant share almost the same composition across 10 significant minerals. This is a block of sintered regolith simulant. Sintered means that it was heated to form a solid block. We then scraped grains from the sintered regolith for examination. Here, Hana, Lena, and Maya are recording the size of the, of the grains. In this image, the blobs that you see are the grains of regolith simulant against a one millimeter scale. As you can see, the grains are less than one millimeter in diameter, varying in size from 100 to 500 microns. In this image, we see a comparison of uncentered and centered regolith simulant. To your left, the uncentered regolith simulant is fine and powdery. The largest grains are less than 100 microns, and many grains are less than 10 microns. To your right, the centered regular simulant is several hundred microns in size. In conclusion, lunar regolith that has been centered and attrited is safe. It is no longer the sharp, fine dust that can harm people's skin and lungs. We can confirm that lunar regolith, once centered and attrited, can be used for farming on the Shackleton Crater Base. The Shackleton Crater Base is also essential to the production of rocket fuel. We're planning to access water hidden in the craters of the moon's south pole. Our team member, Nolan Priest, put together the, the electrolysis device that you see here. The current generator sends electricity through the water samples. The water is then split into oxygen and hydrogen, which are captured in the different containers. We conducted the experiment to test on three water samples, distilled water, tap water, and lunar water that is contaminated with basalt soil. We conducted twice, once with constant power and once with constant voltage. In this image, Austin is recording how long it took to produce hydrogen gas. Here are our results. The height of the bars represents how many seconds are required to produce hydrogen. In both experiments, we've we've discovered that lunar water contaminated with basalt soil achieved a higher rate of electrolysis than distilled water. To conclude, lunar water can be processed into rocket fuel without being purified. This means that we can save time and energy. The construction of a space ring will require a large amount of resources. Therefore, the ASM corpus will be constructed out of the asteroid Ryugu. Our construction rockets will assume a stationary orbit 400 meters above the best surface mining location. Then, automated robots will be lowered from tethers composed of braided dyneema, where they'll begin extracting resources required for con the construction of the corpus. Shielding is probably the most important part of any space colony, since it protects the inhabitants of the corpus from high-velocity particles, otherwise known as HVPs, and the solar radiation. We have designed a multi-layer shielding for the corpus. To test how different shielding designs protected against the HVPs, we used a high-powered rifle in order to observe how different shielding designs reduced bullet penetration. In this photo, you can see the ASM team preparing the capture units required for our ballistics test. Through experimentation, we have found that a diamond-shaped shielding structure is an effective way to stop HVPs. The diamond shape allows for the kinetic energy of the HVPs to be diverted into multiple areas. Therefore, our first layer will be composed of a one centimeter thick layer of corrugated and angled Ryugu alloy. Our second layer will be three centimeters of substrate from the asteroid Ryugu, which will be used to absorb the kinetic energy of any penetrating high velocity particle. In our field test, we also tested Dyneema, a Kevlar-like material. Dyneema proved to be the most protective of all, reducing bullet penetration more than any other metal configuration. Therefore, for our third layer, we will be using a six millimeter layer of Dyneema in order to catch any remaining high velocity particle. Water and substrate are readily available on the asteroid Ryugu. In this picture, you can see water on the right and substrate on the left. The darker areas represent penetration by radiation, while the lighter areas represent resistance to the radiation. 
As you can see here, water is an effective blocker of radiation. However, with increased depth, substrate proved to be even more effective. Therefore, for our fourth and final layer, we plan on using a 10 centimeter layer of substrate in order to block the radiation. Docking poses a special challenge for the corpus since it spins in order to generate artificial gravity. We chose a less radical method of docking. Instead of spinning the entire central hub of the corpus, we plan on spinning only the spacecraft itself so that relative to, to the spacecraft, the corpus will appear still. Then, Docking arms from the corpus will approach the spacecraft and lock onto it, allowing for the transfer of both cargo and people. <clears throat> Producing electricity is a unique challenge for the ASM corpus. It can't use fusion reactors because the technology is not ready. Oil and other fossil fuels are not viable since they must be supplied from the Earth. Solar panels are the best option. To save money and materials, a single solar array will be placed on the side of the ASM corpus that faces the sun. In this image here from JPL shows the asteroid Rigu as the white ellipse. As you can see, Rigu has a near-Earth perigee and a near-Mars apogee. Because the ASM corpus will be constructed from the asteroid Rigu, it will have the same elliptical orbit. Once fully constructed, we'll begin an orbital transfer. Now, an orbital transfer is dependent on a delta V of 2.5 kilometers per second. This requires an enormous amount of fuel. On December 2033, we will receive a fuel supply from the Shackleton Crater Base while in near-Earth vicinity. Then, in May 2037, we will prepare for an orbital transfer. We'll blast the ASM corpus from the elliptical orbit of Rigu into a near-Mars orbit, right outside Mars gravitational sphere of influence. Once the orbital transfer is complete, the ASM corpus will begin to spin, creating an artificial Earth-like gravity. Now, there are several reasons why we decided to move the ASM corpus near Mars. Number one, the 615-day year makes attitude control simple, requiring a 0.6 degree adjustment per day to keep the solar panels facing the sun. Number two, placing the corpus near Mars allows Martian exploration. And number three, the ASM corpus becomes an easy relay point to other asteroids that can be developed. Now, the ASM corpus project is not only a space ring, but a call to excel in our knowledge as students and professionals as we look further into the beauty of space. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for listening to our presentation on the ASM corpus. And a big thank you to our teacher and mentor, Frederick Herman. <laughs> Also, thank you to Ms. Lynn Zielinski, who has helped us to improve this presentation. And a big thank you to Al Globus, who has dedicated his time and effort in creating the NSS Space Settlement Contest, giving students like us a chance to share in our knowledge, creativity, and imagination as we look further into space exploration. Thank you, mahalo, and aloha. Oh my gosh, I hope you're as impressed as I am. <laughs>